Hello viewers, Super GT here. Recently I played Gran Turismo 7 and here's how it went. This start was absolutely incredible. You're going to be in awe at the brilliance of Scott Speed. Scott Chegg is back in the house. We're going to give this one a good go from 11th on the grid. Now immediately someone's going to spin. We're also going to go up the inside of the Jaguar. But watch this. A further five positions going to be gained in one corner. So seven positions in one corner. 11th to 4th in one go. The brilliance of Scott Jagg knows no limits. Sometimes his genius is almost frightening. But there we are. Amazing start. So this was a recent daily race around the Nürburgring Grand Prix circuit. And being the honorary American that I, that I now am with the Scott Speed account, I had to choose an American car and therefore I have gone for the Chevrolet Corvette. Now let's move this forward a little bit. This is the end of lap number one and uh, we're catching up to the back of this uh, McLaren and I felt like I wanted to go for a different strategy on this race compared to some of the others here because you have to use the medium tire and the hard tire. I've started on the medium but a couple of these guys have begun the race on the hard tire and they are going to come into the pit lane in just a moment. Into the final chicane with the uh, questionable track limits there, but that's just how it is. So the top two cars, or two of the top three there, go into the pit lane, and we are going to move, therefore, up into second place. That's a really good return on lap one, 11th to second. And we've got to capitalise on this opportunity now to try to pull towards the guy in the lead of the race, who's about 1.5 seconds in front there in the Porsche. Nice little corner there, turn one. Towards the end of the lap, we've definitely reduced the deficit to below one second, late on the brakes into the chicane, and we've gained a couple more tenths, 0.6 now the gap, as we home in on the race lead. Now, the pressure isn't quite on for this guy yet, but we are gonna get a little bit closer. Setting the fastest lap, which is surely going to pique his attention as we almost go into the back of him into turn one and cause a catastrophic incident. But the catastrophic incident was about to come here in the form of this poor soul being sent to the Shadow Realm as he turns left into a right-hander and there it is. He has met his fate. Sad times indeed. So with him now out of the picture, I move swiftly up into the race lead and he moves swiftly into the wall incredible scenes and this was just a titanic rise of scott speed 11th to first albeit we still have to pit as we set the fastest lap of the race again now i was taking note of this someone else set the fastest lap and then someone else set the fastest lap so it turns out i wasn't the quickest player on on this uh, circuit at this point in time and therefore with the gap to second place about 10 seconds I wasn't really paying attention to the gap to second it really mattered the gap to the people behind as they were the ones who were gaining so these laps here were quite crucial the gap went up to 13 but as I, I, as I was saying um, it was the people behind who had to really take account of so with my tyres now on the verge of dying of death it was time to peel off to the right hand side and enter the pit lane to put on the hard tyres. And this would be really interesting to see exactly where we come out with three laps of the race remaining. So the Chevrolet boys in the pit lane doing a fantastic job. And are we going to be able to settle into third place? It's going to be really close on the apex here. As we head in towards the apex, kind of pinched. Well, not really. Gave me plenty of space. It's got the outside line, which turns into the inside line. Turn two and omg sam has just taken that position couple of tenths if i could have just been two or three tenths faster in that stint i would now be in third if not uh, not fourth so it just shows you the fine margins and with a car very close behind the mclaren i had to be uh, quite quick getting up to speed in this stint uh, on the worst tire on the hard tire now so it'd be quite hard to challenge sam who's now on the stronger tire but let's see what we can do with a couple of laps remaining down the hill. You see the gap opening up already. 
as we just don't quite have the grip of that Jaguar. And uh, the McLaren in close proximity, but not anywhere near close enough to overtake. So one final car to go into the pit lane that moved us back into third. But I was kind of in no man's land here. It didn't look like I could overtake the second, nor could fourth overtake me. So it's kind of in this weird little area here at the beginning of lap number nine. As we progress through the Schumacher rest, this was quite strange because I just dipped two wheels into that gravel there on the apex of the Schumacher S. And I thought it was going to be a penalty, actually. That's not strange at all. I'm talking about the wrong bit. Something later in the video. You can see here, I could uh, manage to catch up quite a lot, actually. I kind of went for a half type, which was never really going to work into that final corner. But it was quite a good race. 11th to 3rd in the Chevrolet. Very close to 2nd. I'll take it. Let's take a look once again at this miraculous race start. Lord Moses parting the seas as we move up seven positions in about three seconds. Incredible scenes and then everyone smashing each other about at the back. Take a look. Let's take a look from this Ford GT. This was the car that really caused, well, you smashed into the Audi, kind of chopped across the other cars and then smashed back into the other cars. And this guy is the real reason I managed to overtake so many cars so quickly. The Mercedes, this, this guy got quite unlucky as he cut well that gap wasn't there to be invaded i'd say but he went for it anyway and as you can see ends up facing the the wrong way now this was really strange this guy was in the lead and he must have some sort of personal vendetta against that audi because he tried to murder him straight away only got murdered himself which was not ideal uh, and then does a nice little 360 pirouette before rejoining just inside the top 10 and you see just how much carnage there is back in this pack here. And um, a couple of laps later, I mean, I do not know what went on between these two guys. There must be some sort of previous beef between the pair of them. As you can see, they're now waiting for each other to... Well, the Porsche is waiting for the Audi. And, you know, what a disaster. They started first and second, and here they are smashing each other about for 11th. It really does show you, you know, don't... Don't get into a fight with an idiot because they're just going to drag you down. And here, you waited for him again. And um, they're, they're both just going to go at it. So just absolutely shameful stuff on on uh, on site here. Pure filth. Do have a shower after this because it is so dirty. Um, later on, they were actually both in the auto drive here. I think sending messages to each other in the chat, which was quite funny. And then they ended up quitting. So that episode ended. But let's move back to Europe because this uh, race here, you can see I had a six tenth deficit to the guy in the lead uh, for the start of this race. I set my lap, it was quite a good lap, but this guy in front, very, very fast. And I felt like, okay, he's, he's definitely quicker than me on qualifying. But if I want to stand a chance of beating him in the race, I need to really try and push and challenge him quite early. I almost got the inside there, but not quite close enough to do it. Uh, but Nürburgring GP is a circuit where there are quite a lot of overtaking opportunities. And here, there's an opportunity for corner cutting and getting a penalty. Which is exactly what happens. So not an ideal way to start this second race of this video. So as we head through turn 5, looping down towards turn 6... All I can do is try to keep as close as possible, maybe get in front, and I would still probably lose the position after the penalty. If not, put him under pressure, maybe force him to get a penalty. Let's take a look through the Schumacher S. And he is actually going to go wide. This is what I was referencing earlier in the video uh, at the wrong time. You see there, he dips two wheels into the gravel and gets a penalty for that, which was quite interesting because I'm not sure that they would have actually gained time from doing that but that's just the way it is now courtesy of doing that quite recently he isn't going to serve the penalty now he's going to serve it in one lap's time so this gives an interesting set piece here really whereby we have one lap to try to catch up as much as possible and then once they serve their penalty in a lap's time i might be able to jump into the lead so it's quite an interesting scenario whenever this comes up 
when you have these sort of offset penalties and you know that you could overtake in about a lap's time when you get to the penalty zone once again. So this lap here needs to be a good one. In towards turn one, isn't that marker just before the 100 board, down towards the apex, and actually we've gained a couple of tenths already. So this is looking promising, but we do need to gain a few more before the end of the lap. But Nürburgring GP, one of my favorite tracks, Route 3 cars, probably my favorite combination in the game, one that I'm very comfortable with and do feeling uh, do feel quite good in this car around this circuit now the gap down to 1.1 by this point is going to serve this penalty now let's take a look at what this gap is going to come down to as we head towards the chicane definitely going to get quite close here it's going to feel like going defensive and stay to the left hand side which is exactly what's going to happen i'm going to try and keep him there as long as possible to make him go narrow coming in which could give me a chance on the way out so let's see is it going to give me that slingshot? Kind of. The door is open. I take the invitation and move up into the lead of the race. Good battling between the two of us. And now I'm going to have to go defensive fully to the right-hand side to make sure that they do not manage to get on my right. I'm going to keep them on the left, which is going to be the outside for turn one. Make sure we don't miss our breaking point. And don't overshoot the corner too much. We have overshot slightly. And he's actually done a perfect old switcheroo. And he's going to get around the outside through the second corner and into the third one it gets fully in front and but let's just pause it there a moment because i've got to give credit to this guy that was a great move totally done me but here we're going to get a penalty frustratingly as i was kind of unsighted of where the curb exactly was and well likewise spaniard's going to get a penalty as well 0.5 seconds i'm going to get mine here so we both get a penalty, it's quite frustrating because I could have capitalised on his one. But now we're both in the same boat. So was, this was a really interesting race between the two of us. I felt like he was just going to run away, but that isn't exactly how this happened. Coming down towards the hairpin at the bottom of the track. Get that rotation, back on the power, drive out in a straight line. Straight-ish line. And then we come up to the Schumacher S for the third time now this was strange made a big mistake as you can see very big mistake drifting a little bit wide on the apex and then just going completely off the track i couldn't really explain that one it seemed like a really strange incident as I, it looked like they could have controlled the car as they did on the earlier lap but on this occasion it completely got the better of them and they went flying off the other side so serving the penalty car behind is going to serve the penalty as well but we've got a nice 3.5 second margin by this point it was actually six seconds setting the fastest lap there at the end of lap four you see there six or 5.9 to be pedantic 5.9 second margin at the beginning of lap five so you'd probably be thinking well this would be a comfortable race victory not quite because by lap seven you see that gap was coming down this guy was very quick on worn tires i think maybe i was working my tires a little bit too hard and the other guy was actually doing a better job of preserving the tyres, therefore having better grip later on in the race. But a bit later on, it wasn't going to count for anything anyway. Because that gap mysteriously came down to 1.8 and then stayed at 1.8, which was really strange. And as we came through the Schumacher S, the wall dissolved and we had an unexpected error. There it is. So some sort of glitch, some sort of problem we go back to the main menu and it was quite a disappointing end really because i felt like that was going to be a really good race between two of us and it kind of was for the first few laps but we tried to jump back in and go again for another battle it was the same people in this one although we have a uh, momo just behind very quick player so we kind of have three players in this battle now and this kind of shows you how even with the same people, the same circumstances, it's the same race with the same cars around the same track. Things can just be a bit different. Sometimes your performance isn't the same from race to race. On this one, it was a little bit different. You see here, it drifts a little bit wide and nearly makes that same mistake again. And it was really strange because I got a penalty for that and the car in front didn't, even though we both kind of dipped our wheels into the gravel. So the penalties on that corner are kind of strange, I must say. I suppose you just shouldn't go there don't go into the gravel and then you definitely won't get a penalty that's the lesson to be learned there i suppose and then as a result momo goes through 
and I'm down to third. And this one, this race is one of those that just kind of got away from me, and it's it's just what happens sometimes in sim racing. And sometimes you just don't quite have the speed that you maybe did in the previous race. As you can see here, end of lap four, I did set the fastest lap of the race, so I definitely had the pace, but just did not have the consistency. I just couldn't do it as consistent as what the top two were. It was quite strange. I was well off the pace on my other laps by over a second, but I was able to do a very quick lap once. Now this was weird. Now you see the Spaniards has taken a nice little trip into the barrier on the entry of the pit lane. God knows why. That's not the ideal line, and that's certainly not what his team would have wanted on the way into the pit lane. But there you go. Hands me third place, which is effectively second, and as we come round towards the end of the race, I was actually quite quick on the hard tyre compared to the leader. I did manage to get that gap down to below two seconds, but it wasn't going to be enough. Momo wins the race, and I come through in second, which wasn't too bad of a result. I did start second, but a bit disappointing because I felt like my pace was there, just not the consistency. So let's try and end this video on a high because I started this final race on pole position. As you can see, no one in front trying to survive the first corner went a little bit deep deliberately to try to prevent a dive bomb and then going a little bit narrow here to prevent the old switcheroo in towards turn three go quite narrow really hug that apex make sure we don't get a penalty this time around uh, learning our lessons from the previous race so when you start in pole position it's really a case of just try to pull away and you know lose the guy in second and that is basically what all we're trying to do here. Just really focus on hitting those apexes, nailing those breaking points and pulling away as quickly as possible. That's exactly what happened. At the end of lap five, you see here, the pressure was a bit too much. And the guy in second ends up doing a nice little pirouette. And a couple of laps later, it was a dominant victory for Super GT. Amazing stuff. It was about a 15 second win in the end. But there we go. Thank you so much for watching. There is another video on the screen for your viewing pleasure. In the meantime, have an amazing day and I'll catch you next time. Goodbye.